Hello, my name's Steve Smith and I'm an Automotive Application Specialist here at Pico Technology. We're going to look at um, prop shaft balancing. We've got a, a rig here set up to simulate that. So we've got a shaft here on the end of this motor and then a flange with six bolts around the circumference. You may see or you hope you can see that we've got a deliberate imbalance here. So there's a five gram nut placed on one of the bolts. So we purposely have an imbalance in this shaft. So let's run through the software and see how we actually balance this shaft out. So it's part of MBH. It is prop shaft balancing and it is pinion flange trial balance method. And what that is going to do, we are going to put a deliberate imbalance onto this shaft uh, at three strategic points about the circumference. And then we, the software will be able to determine where is the optimum position to place balance to get the final um, balance required to true this shaft. Uh, we'll use the wizard method, so this is all uh, pre-configured. Um, Picoscope is connected, we can see there. And first question is, which interface are we going to use? Well, it'll be the three-channel interface, but we are only using the vertical axis. So you'll see here we've got an accelerometer connected, and our, our connection via the interface box is channel Y for the vertical axis. You can see there that it's also live, so as I tap the accelerometer, I'm getting a response immediately on the bar graph. Uh, attach the magnet to the accelerometer, and now the accelerometer is mounted vertically to the differential. So this would be um, pinion flange at the rear of the prop shaft onto the rear differential. If it is an aluminium differential, then bond a washer onto there, or if there is a stud that you can utilise, then you can use the thread on the accelerometer. Next is our optical sensor. Now you'll see here we've got an optical sensor that uh, um, passes a beam of light onto the flange. Uh, there's a piece of reflective tape, hope you can see that there, and as the reflective tape passes the optical sensor, it generates one pulse per revolution of the shaft, and that gives us our speed signal. That goes in onto channel A, and here's an opportunity to test the input. So as we rotate this shaft, we should see that we're getting a speed signal. Yeah, opto signal detected. Move along now, this would be mounted under the vehicle, this would be aimed at the prop shaft. So a little piece of reflective tape on the prop shaft, optical sensor aimed such as to align with that tape, one pulse per revolution. Next we need to take a measurement of the pin pinion flange, sorry, um, the bolt, the uh, diameter across the flange, and we'll go from the center of the bolts. So if we've got a steel ruler here, We'll place that onto bolt one and then across opposite bolt. That gives us 80 millimetre. So we enter that into the software. Once we enter 80 millimetre and the bolt count, which is six, we'll end up with automatically the circumference. You see there, just step back through the wizard. Um, the point to note about bolts as well, um, you'll see here that the bolts are numbered one through to six. So that's very important when we're using the uh, pinion flange trial method. We want to know exactly where to place our additional weight onto which bolt, onto which stud. We've also got the direction of rotation noted as well. Okay, there we are. We're talking about numbering bolts and rotation. Next is a warning that just need to uh, adhere to this because remember this, would, this is a simulation. Typically we'd have the car on the lift, the uh, wheels would be free suspension would be hanging. Ideally, if you can get that suspension where it would lie on the, vi on the road, so keep the posture of the vehicle the same, but with wheels free. Um, disable ABS, ensure all leads are clear. Remember, we are gonna have to rotate this shaft at uh, considerable road speed. Uh, remove rocks and debris from tires. That's one to watch as well, because whatever is in the tires, if the wheels and tires are on the vehicle, they will be thrown out. Um, of course, turn off aircon and other accessories because you will find it could be challenging to maintain shaft speed, road speed on the lift. Uh, varying reasons we haven't got the traditional load that would be applied to the vehicle. Okay, so we now have to run through a uh, shaft speed test. So we need to find out what the optimum imbalance is and at what speed. And we've got a variable frequency drive here that we can start this motor and we can spin this shaft. See the uh, speed of the shaft is being recorded there. And you'll notice now, there we go. There's a resonance from uh, the imbalance within the shaft. OK, 
Okay. That then smooths out just a little. And the software has decided at 3282 RPM, that is the measurement uh, speed required for this shaft for our balance test. So let's run through. The balancing wizard is complete and we're now ready to start. So before I move on, just to show you once more, there is a deliberate imbalance on this flange. So on bolt number one, we have a five gram nut. And our first run is our initial run. So we click on initial run and we'll simulate the shaft turning. In the real world, this would be somebody in the vehicle on the lift now driving this shaft and aiming for that optimum speed of about 3,200 RPM. The software is now taking an initial measurement of the vibration level. Now we need to maintain that RPM and you notice we've got that window between 3232 and 3332 RPM. Okay, now that is complete. So the software has actually taken a measurement now and it's now asking us to place a deliberate weight now at bolt number one. So place the transmission in neutral, stop the engine and place a calibration weight of 4.5 gram. Well, we're using five gram for this at bolt number one. So you can see now we should have considerable vibration from this shaft because we've got double the weight on a single bolt. So let's just have a listen to this. Press calibration run to start the calibration. Remember, we'll watch the progress bar build here. Now there is a lot of imbalance as you can see. Noise level has increased dramatically. Maintain shaft speed while the measurement's being taken. We'll just drop below the 3232 there. Okay. Now the software is asking us to place that deliberate imbalance at a different bolt. So now on bolt number three, and this is why it was important to label these bolts. Now then, we should see a marginal improvement if just by going by a vibration level and noise level, because um, we're not far off having an, uh, uh, a trial balance opposite our imbalance. In the real world, we wouldn't know this, of course. So now we do calibration run two. We follow the instructions of the software. And again, your colleague, whoever would be in the vehicle now, driving at the right speed, the optimum speed, the shaft speed, which they're aiming for, remember, 3232 three, RPM. I think already you can tell there's less vibration there, a little bit quieter from what it was previously where we had double the weight on one stud. There we go, software is taking the measurement. Important to hold that key speed there between 3232 and 3332. Now then, our final imbalance is going to be placed on bolt number five. So I hope you can see what's happening here is that we are putting a deliberate three-point imbalance about the circumference of this shaft, this flange, sorry. So there we are on bolt number five. Click on calibration run three and run the shaft. After this final measurement, we'll actually know where to place our um, trial weight to improve balance. In the sweet spot again, and the measurement can be taken whilst we're in that window. There we go. So the first instruction from the software, remove the calibration weight of 4.5 gram from bolt number five. So let's do that straight away. Our instructions from the software are to suggested balance weight of 1.5 gram at location four. 
Okay, so we've got, we know we are opposite bolt one. We'll put this imbalance here, this trial weight at bolt number four. So we are exceeding the recommended weight. You can see there the arrow denotes the balance required. The blue arrow tells you where we need to put this um, balance weight to sweeten this shaft out. And the red arrow points to where the original imbalance was. So let's run with these two on and just see what we can achieve. There are numerous opportunities after this to fine tune the weight. So try different weights. We call that the, the free run. But let's just do the verification run. Now we've followed the instructions of the software. So we'll click on verification and we'll run the shaft. Interesting to note the noise level now during this, this trial because we should have sweetened that shaft out considerably from an imbalance point of view. <laughs> I think that speaks for itself, doesn't it? Just from a noise level. There we go. So again, we've hit the sweet spot. There's our measurement window. And let's see what results we acquire here. Well, that's good news. Um, the test has passed. The target imbalance was anything below 20 gram centimeter and we achieved a final imbalance of 2.1 gram centimeter so there is our uh, prop shaft balance procedure carried out thoroughly if we wanted to do um, free run let's say i wanted to try a different weight to get that below the 2.1 gram centimeter i could do i just keep using the free run and we keep going with the software when all said and done that pretty much is a fix that would improve our P1 vibration level that was detected with MVH, so prop shaft first order. Um, screenshot this screen now, or you could go for file and print preview, or print, but uh, always worth keeping a, a copy, any notes that you want to include in here. And if we just zoom a little bit, zoom in a little bit on this we'll get our print preview of what a print will look like so for your customer the original imbalance was 7.9 and the uh, final imbalance 2.1 there is um, objective data to confirm and to prove to your customer that you've made a change you've made an improvement to the shafting balance i hope that helps